Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll explain you emitter bias of BJT. In my last video, I have explained fixed bias of BJT. See, in that video, I have explained you this circuit of fixed bias of BJT. With this circuit, if you add additional RE resistance over here, then you will be having emitter bias. Right. So, if you observe emitter bias circuit, in that we are adding RE resistance over here. By adding RE resistance in fixed bias, you will be having emitter bias. If you add RE resistance, then you will be improving stability of operating point. See, operating point means what? Operating point means Q point. So, output operating point over here is having current IC and output voltage VCE. Right. So, here by adding RE, we are improving stability of IC and VCE. In this video, I will derive this stability even. To derive stability, first of all, you need to understand this circuit. See, with this circuit, we give input at base of this transistor. Before you give input to base, we are connecting coupling capacitor C1. We are taking output from collector. Before you take output, we are connecting coupling capacitor C2. See, coupling capacitor does what? Coupling capacitor blocks DC component and it passes only AC components. So, here at input, we will be having AC signal. So, this C1 will be blocking DC component over here. It will only allow AC component to go through it. Here at output, this coupling capacitor that will block DC component over here and it will only allow AC component to appear at output. So, C1 and C2 are coupling capacitor. Those are connected in series with input and output by which we block DC components and we only allow AC component to pass through it. Now, let us derive output current and output voltage equations. See, to derive this, first of all, we need to apply KVL at input side. Let me explain you how to apply KVL here. See, here we are having input at which now I'll apply KVL, right? So, in this loop, we are having voltage VCC. So, let me write VCC. And here another voltage is VBE. You see, VBE is happening from plus to minus. That's why I need to write minus VBE over here. That is equals to voltage drop across elements. So, you see we have RB and RE in this loop. So, here voltage drop across RB that is IB into RB. Right. Voltage drop across RB that is IB into RB. And voltage drop across RE that is RE into IE. So, IE into RE that is voltage drop across RE. Now, we have this equation. See, in this equation, we wanted to have equation of current IB. So, here I need to convert this IE in terms of IB. You see how to convert that. One should know what is IE. IE is IC plus IB, right? And IC is how much? IC is beta into IB. IC is beta into IB. Right. Beta is common emitter current gain. Here, if you take IB common, then 1 plus beta that you need to multiply it with this. So, IE is IB into 1 plus beta. So, now we can substitute this in this equation. So, you will be having equation of IB. So, here we will be having VCC minus VB that is equals to now IB common into C RB plus now RE into 1 plus beta, right? Why the reason is we are placing IE is equals to IB into 1 plus beta. So, IB that we are taking common over here. So, in multiplied with RE, now there has to have 1 plus beta over here. Now, you can have IB current equation. So, what is IB? IB is VCC minus VBE divided by RB plus RE into 1 plus beta. 
now once you have base current from base current you can have output current ic see simply by having ic is equals to beta into ib you can have output current equation right i'll explain you stability first of all you need to understand how equations are coming right so this is my equation of output current this is base current equation for emitter bias of bjt now let us try to understand how output voltage equation is there so for output voltage equation let us apply kvl at output side so you see here at output side i'm applying kvl over here right so in this loop voltage is vcc so let me write vcc and then you see in this loop another voltage is vc that is happening from plus to minus so i need to write minus vce that is output voltage that is equals to voltage drop across this rc and re right so voltage drop across rc that is rc into ic let me write this ic rc plus here voltage drop across re that is re into ie re into ie right that is how we can have kvl at output side now we wanted to have vce right and one should know see this ie is how much ic plus ib relatively you can say this ib is very small compared to ic so ie is almost equivalent to ic just to make equation in terms of ie ic over here right so you can say one thing see ie relatively that is almost equal to ic to simplify this equation right and see here we wanted to have output voltage equation so vce is what output voltage right so if you wanted to have vce then what is vce if you take this on other side then vce that is vcc minus if you take ic common from this two then ic into rc plus re see this is how we can have output voltage equation right so now you have output current and output voltage equations right and i told you that this q point is having output current and output voltage that is having better stability because of re now that is what the case which i'm going to explain you based on these equations right so see advantages of re in emitter bias so here see for stability how many things that we need to keep in our mind stability that depends on rise in temperature so if you increase temperature stability of transistor that is getting decrease that is what i have already explained in my earlier videos of bias stabilization right so if you increase temperature then there will be increase in collector current if collector current increases then stability goes down right if collector current increases then stability is moving towards saturation so we we just want to eliminate issue of increase in collector current now that we can have it up to some extent because of re let me explain you how see collector current that equation is beta into ib plus 1 plus beta into ico so if you increase temperature ico will increase that will increase into ic so if ic increases then ie also will increase which will result into higher drop across re right so if you observe this equation see input equation so in that if you increase ic then you will be increasing ie also so if you increase ie then you will be increasing voltage drop across re right so if you increase ic you will be increasing ie that will increase voltage drop across re if voltage drop across re increases then ib will also decrease let me explain you how see from this equation from this equation you can say ib is how much vcc minus vb minus ie re divided by rb let me note it down over here now with this if you increase if you increase ic ie will increase if ie increases then higher drop across re will happen so this will increase if this is increasing then you see ib will go down right then ib will go down means ib decreases 
as if IB is decreasing, then it will not allow IC to increase further. Why? The reason is, you should know, see, IC is beta into IB, right? So, if drop across RE increases, then IB decreases. If IB decreases, then IC will not increase. Means, we are improving stability over here, right? How? If you increase IC, then it will not increase that value of IC up to some extent. Why? The reason is, if IC increases, then drop across RE also increases, which results into lowering of IB current and based on that, IC current cannot increase up to some extent. Means, we are improving stability. Let me explain you second case study. See, if you have increase in beta, then obviously collector current should increase, right? So, if you increase beta, collector current should increase as per this. How? You see, IC is equals to beta into IB. But because of RE, you don't have that much effect of beta. Let me explain you how. See, I have explained you IB current equation. What is that? VCC minus VB divided by RB plus RE into 1 plus beta. Right. Let me write that over here. So here, if you increase the value of beta, then what will happen you see? If you increase the value of beta, practically IC should increase, but it will not increase that much. The reason is, IC is not that much dependent on beta as per this equation. Let me explain you how. See, with this equation, if you say, with this equation, if you say, here, RE into 1 plus beta is very, very greater than RB, is very, very greater than RB. Then, in this equation, in this equation, one thing that you can say, you see, what? You can say, this denominator, that is this only, right? So, beta into VCC minus VB divided by now, instead of 1 plus beta, if I write beta into RE, then you see this beta will get cancelled. So, your IC will be VCC minus VB divided by RE. But that is true only if value of RE that is very high. Right. So, if value of RE that is very high, then we can neglect the effect of increase in beta as it is getting cancelled over here. Right. So, effect of temperature means what? Effect of temperature means if you increase temperature, then beta can increase. As well as effect of temperature is what? If you increase temperature, then IC will increase. Right. But because of we are adding additional resistor RE, here we are improving stability of IC and VC. Right. Means operating point that is getting stable over here. I hope you have understood all those things. Still, if anything that you would like to share, Please note it down in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.